Hi, everyone. Hello, I'm Ashley Thompson. I am the managing director of the Blackbot Institute for Philanthropic Impact. And we are thrilled to come to you today from BBCon 2018 in Orlando. Um, it's Blackbot's conference where technology meets social good. And we're here today to talk about the missing middle and how you are probably completely neglecting this important group of donors. Um, and Roger Craver, the editor of The Ad uh, Agitator, is here with me, who is going to break it all down for us um, and give us all of the tips on how to quite simply not do that. Um, if you have not heard of Roger Craver, um, you've probably been living under a rock all of this time. Um, Roger is really a, a fundraising guru um, who has written books. He also was really behind launching a lot of the largest organizations around the globe. He's been a, a piece of that. He also is the founder of Donor Trends. And we're really excited that he has also now um, been invited and has joined our inaugural advisory board for the BlackBot Institute. So welcome, Roger. Well, thank you, Ashley. It's good to be here. And uh, welcome out there and wherever. Yes. And here. Yes. Take it away. We're going to talk about the missing middle. This was supposed to be also with Mark Robner of uh, Sea Change Strategy, so he's the missing other to today's uh, session. He's stuck at an airport in Washington, D.C. But I want to talk about why you're letting all this, leaving all this money on the, uh, on the table. I can't make it any clearer than that. Uh, and, and believe me, there's a land rush for this level of giving so if you're not dealing with the mid-level or mid-value donors on your file, you really need to uh, get in tune uh, with, this, uh, with this effort because there's tons, and I mean millions of dollars, for almost any organization sitting out there that, uh, that, needs, to be, uh, that needs to be picked up. Here's the reality. 1% on average, of the donors give about 34% of the money to nonprofits. So a very small group of people are providing most of the funds for our organizations. Yet many organizations fail to discriminate among donors. This is one area, fundraising is one area where discrimination is absolutely essential. It's not frowned upon, it's not bad, it's necessary. And if we don't pay attention to the people who can give more money, then we're really uh, malpracticing this, uh, this craft of, uh, of fundraising. So be alert that very few people on your file will give you the most, uh, the most money. Yet most organizations try to figure out how they can best ignore those uh, folks. Uh, they either uh, get a very large gift and decide that they have to turn it over to a gift officer who may or may not get around to it, or they certainly don't want to mail them a letter because someone who gave us $500 or $250 really shouldn't get a direct mail letter. And consequently, these people lie out there in, uh, in no man's land and don't get uh, picked up. So the money goes down the drain over and over again. As we talk, there's probably a couple million dollars that have gone down the uh, drain. Here's the reality of the mid-level or mid-value donor program. On most files, there's around 16% or so of the, uh, of the file who fits the description of a mid-level donor. Now, when I talk about mid-level donor, it may, the definition of it may vary from organization to organization. But I'm, I'm speaking generally of uh, $500 to $5,000. That's the, that's the, uh, the mid-range. And if you just looked at recency, frequency, and giving amount or value of giving, this is the, this is the percentage that, uh, that is there. This, this is, uh, uh, just in case you can't see me here, a quote that just reminds you how, how important this, uh, this whole area is and how you, you shouldn't uh, ignore it because the, the mid-value programs, this group, this small group of donors represents the most significant part of your fundraising. They renew uh, or retain better, they, uh, they commit better than major donors 
and uh, they, uh, they are a lasting resource once you bring them on board. Yet, over and over, organizations won't talk to them, won't give them the proper content, won't uh, do the things necessary to, uh, to get them into the game and keep them into the game. <coughs> Those of you who are digitally uh, inclined and so convinced that uh, the, the digital nirvana is at hand will be out of luck when it comes to uh, mid-level giving. Mid-level donors are by and large not accessible, or they're accessible, but they're not acquirable by, uh, by digital uh, means. So uh, what we're going to spend a little bit of time on are the techniques using mail that, uh, that you should be uh, considering. Doesn't mean you shouldn't communicate with your mid-value uh, donors or the people in that group. What it means is they, they really shouldn't be solicited and in part, they shouldn't be cultivated uh, that way. So don't, don't ignore sending them the necessary updates and action alerts or whatever you do digitally but this, uh, this is not an inexpensive, uh, the use of digital is not an inexpensive way to attract uh, donors. And these, these statistics I'm, I'm citing to you come from a, uh, a study that uh, Mark and his colleagues did for Sea Change Strategies, uh, looking at, a, uh, at several dozen organizations that had and did not have mid-level programs. And I'm speaking from the experience of over the last 40 years of, of putting in place, launching, and, uh, and, and managing around 50 mid-level programs. So when I, when I say to you that this is an important effort, I, I, truly, uh, I truly mean it. The, the important thing to understand when you're dealing with mid-level donors and even major donors, is that these are also information buyers. These are, these are folks who really do want to know what we're doing uh, to accomplish our mission. They really do want to know that their contributions make a difference. They really do want to know the detail in the offerings uh, that uh, your organization is doing in terms of furthering your mission. So this is, this is one group of people where a one-page, two-page letter or a few emails are not going to move the needle. These are content-driven folks. They really do want to know. They want to be on the inside. They want to be involved. If you can figure out a way to have them participate, then, uh, then so much uh, the better. The way I look at these uh, programs, I, I generally divide a, a donor file up into, uh, into three parts. One, those who are ready for an immediate upgrade. Now, these are, these are folks who give to you frequently, but they may not be giving you $500. Maybe they're giving you $250. Maybe, uh, maybe they're giving you $100. But they've, they've given money to you frequently and, and regularly. And these are the folks... That you, can, uh, that you can most easily move up. You can move them up by changing the ask string in the appeal and simply asking for more money. My, my favorite technique, the one I've found works best, you don't have to ask them to join a giving club for a certain amount of money. Rather, you can say because of your loyalty and your devotion, which is clearly demonstrated by your giving, we are inducting you into the President's Council, the whatever, whatever, or we are going to treat you specially. You don't even have to give uh, a name for a giving club. You can simply say, because of your extraordinary interest in our organization and its mission, we are going to send you additional information and keep you more involved, and we hope you will uh, welcome this opportunity by, by responding to the enclosed 
uh, appeal. So you can uh, you can simply be very aggressive with the giving string if they if the asking string if they if they are giving you 250, change the asking string to ask for 500, 750, uh, or uh, additional uh, additional amounts. In other words, this is the group that can most aggressively be uh, be brought up. The, uh, the, the, the next are those who are just about ready. And there you can be a bit less aggressive with the, uh, with the asking amount, but you can still invite them to be part of a select group of donors who make all the world of difference in the accomplishment of your mission. And then there's a third group that are worth the work. And these folks may need to be upgraded in your, in your lower gift uh, programs and then brought into this. But it's, it's like, uh, in, in, in many ways, it's, it's like a football field. You're gonna move people up by, the, by 10 yards at a time until you get them to the goal, which is, uh, is either the mid-level goal of, let's say, $1,000, or you move them into the major gift category. And there's a whole science uh, behind this, which we can't uh, do on this pop-up, but it, it, it's, it's a well-known process, and you can, uh, you can find it in a report that I'm going to give you at the, uh, at the end of this. So the, the important thing is to understand you can't do this necessarily and probably shouldn't assume you can do this in one or two mailings or phone calls or visits. may have to be an incremental increase. But it's sure worth the while because once you've increased that giving, they'll stick with you year after uh, year after year. Most of my career I have spent in direct response and, and most of that in direct mail. Why direct mail? Because it raises 87 to 94% out of all the money uh, raised for organizations of the, t of the type I work for. So it can't be ignored. Direct mail is not dead, uh, and uh, it's it's a very important thing. the w The way I approach mid level giving and fundraising in general is when I write an appeal, or I write a prepare a package. The first package I prepare is for the mid level donors, and all the other packages are derivative from that, because it's for the mid level donors that you want to put your best effort forward. And this is your most expensive effort because what I'm about to tell you involves a lot of, uh, of different uh, content. So you, you need to think about what you're likely to receive out of this mid-level program, which is a substantial amount of money relative to the lower dollar parts of the file and spend your money accordingly. Spend more on those who are going to give more. So that, so that the, what we're talking about are four or six or eight page letters instead of one page letters. We're talking about uh, inserts. We're talking about uh, perhaps uh, an internal memo that went to the board that you think these people should see. In other words, we're talking about packages that are loaded with content and uh, information. Here's, here's an example of a package that was sent, uh, this is for the Australian Heart Foundation, that was sent uh, by Express Post. This is the equivalent of our uh, priority mail. Sometimes I use Federal Express or UPS, and, and right away folks say, oh my heavens, that's uh, that's $7 or $15, but it's worth it. And with this, on the left-hand side, is a folder that has uh, the content of a, of a memo and action the organization's taking. There are drawings from children who have been helped by this. There are photographs of patients who have been helped by this. In other words, lots and lots of content. And this, this pack may cost uh, ten dollars, whereas you're used normally to spending maybe a dollar or a dollar and a half. Well, take the money you would spend on that dollar or dollar and a half package and put it into this, and you'll have much better results. 
In other words, when you look at your total budget, you should be devoting the, the bulk of your budget, uh, your appeals budget, to, to getting these mid-level donors on board. Now, I mentioned uh, the studies that Sea Change Strategies, which is my missing middle, Mark Rovner, uh, who has, um, that is, uh, they have done over, over the years. And you can go on their website, Sea Change Strategies, to, uh, to see what is, uh, is going on there. But I really urge you to, to give serious thought to the, uh, the mid-level program. If you, uh, if you read that program, you can, also, uh, you can also go on The Agitator, that's theagitator.net, and we have a number of posts on the strategies for selecting mid-level prospects. So this is an opportunity you really don't, uh, really don't want to miss. And uh, let, me, let me answer any, uh, any questions. I'll repeat the questions and uh, maybe our folks uh, out uh, away from here will benefit from that. Are there, uh, are there any questions about mid-value uh, programs? Yes, ma'am. The question is, what type of people demographically and otherwise fall into the, the mid-level prospect uh, thing? They, they, are, they, are generally, they, they are generally indistinguishable demographically from the other donors. We, we all have to remember that most of our donors are old people and the parents of old people. Uh, so, so the... Uh, the, the demography is pretty much uh, the same. Where you distinguish them and how you can, how you can do it mathematically, there, well, there, are two, there are two ways to identify them. Mathematically, look, look at, the, um, look at the, the recency and frequency of giving. And I, I don't have it here, but uh, I will, uh, if, if you will send me a note to Roger at The Agitator, I will send you the calculation formulas for doing that. Another way to do it is there are predictive models out there that will predict the selection for mid-value donors. But they're very difficult to distinguish demographically. The way you distinguish them is the frequency of giving and the level of the, la of the most recent gifts. So someone who has given you year after year and, and has given you a range of, let's say, 100 to $200, they're a good bet to be moved up into that because you're inviting them to become part of a special group. And they're going to get inside information. They're going to find out more about the mission. So they're going to be rewarded, not, not with a tote bag or a plush animal, but they're going to be rewarded with the thing they care most about, and that is the work of your mission. Other questions? Yes? That's a great question. If I, if I understood it correctly, is how do the peer-to-peer -peer team leaders? So, so we have runners, for example, for races and whatnot. They're donating to the person's cause to us. So we, we need them to be invested. Right. How, does, how do the peer-to-peer -peer people uh, fit into the mid-level program? The, the first person to look at in a peer-to-peer -peer program is the team leader, the person who recruited them. And most organizations ignore this horribly because when you, when you look at, uh, you do a post-mortem on many of these peer-to-peer -peer events, you'll find team leaders who may have rounded up a few thousand dollars or tens of thousands of dollars in the case of some, uh, of, of some marathons. And they, by and large, go ignored until next year when they're asked to do it again. Instead, a team leader, a good team leader in a peer-to-peer -peer situation is a, is a mid-level or major, even major donor. And they should be treated that way. They should, you should report the results of the, um, uh, of the event to them. Not only thank them, but involve them in the planning for next year's event. We're thinking about this T-shirt. What do you think? Or, or this T-shirt. Or we're thinking of uh, uh, doing, doing this for next year. What do you think? I mean, these are the very people who you want to come back 
over and over and bring their team back with them. So provide them with insight and information and then give them the tools to thank their team and uh, report back what their, uh, what their run or walk or whatever they were doing uh, accomplished. Yes. The rule of the question is: What is my rule of thumb for the number of direct mail pieces to this group? There is there is no one rule of thumb. Uh, it 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 should be frequently enough to keep the the donor informed about what you're doing. Most of the mid-level programs I I run uh, have six uh, reports. And notice I say reports, not appeals, a year, because uh, the folks want you. You want to keep them uh, right in front of you. Now, sometimes it's it's not a long package. Sometimes it's an inside memo that you are going to send to the board, and you just clip your business card on it and say, "We're sending this out to the board next week," but I wanted to give you advance notice. Sometimes it's just a pack of uh, newspaper or, or clips uh, from the web, stapled together, xeroxed, copied, and sent to them with your business card saying, "See what you make possible." I prefer, not prefer, but I also use flowers. I love to send bouquets of flowers. I go to a local florist and I say, look, we got, we got 200 people who are giving us $1,000 in our mid-value program. Would you, uh, would you contribute that so that uh, we can send them a thank you bouquet? And uh, folks love it. And of course, you'll get the calls from them, don't waste my money, but you don't get the calls when you explain that a local florist who's also in this program, is so excited about the work of ABC that she's donated these arrangements. So it's, it's, it, it's like any other human relationship. Uh, it's, it's courting, it's surprises, it's thank yous, and it's information. I mean, if you get along well with your partner at home, uh, then you'll know what uh, to do. If you're fighting and don't have date nights, then you won't know what to do. But that's... Other questions? I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Are you asking if, if, you, if you have to be personalized when you send them information? Yes. The, the question is how personalized does this have to be? You, it has to be personal in the sense that you need to recognize that they are a good donor to your, uh, to your organization and a, and a loyal donor. And you, you, you need to let them know they're not alone. Uh, dear Ms. Smith, you, know, you, are, you are one of 12 people who belong to this group, who supports us in an extraordinary way. Without your support, we couldn't do some of the things we do. And every once in a while, they should also maybe get a little note from one of the beneficiaries of your organization's work. Dear Mrs. Smith, I, I know how generous you are, or I've been told that you are very generous, and I am very grateful. Uh, thank you so much. Other questions? Going once, going twice, don't forget the forgotten middle. My 15 minutes are up. Thank you for your time.